the topic of today's discussion, as we mentioned, is the inevitable rise of AI in programmatic advertising and its implications. To talk more about that, with us we have Ms. Manasi Narsimhan, Vice President and Head of Marketing and Communications Mastercard South Asia. Mr. Gaurav Mehta, CMO Girnar Soft. Girnar Soft has industry portfolio ranging from automobile, real estate, e-learnings and e-commerce. Also offers offshore solutions in programming, computer programming and database management. And we have Mr. Prabhakar Tiwari, CMO Angel Broking, a stock trading firm that needs no introduction. Right, so AI, right? Difficult, interesting. Uh, we understand everything. It's too far-fetched a dream. Too many definitions of, of, of how we describe programmatic. So let's take a technical definition. Let's look at the technical definition of uh, programmatic, right? As, as described on Wiki. It's a system's ability to correctly interpret external data, to learn from such data, and to use those learnings to achieve specific goals and tasks through flexible adoption. That's how Wikipedia in technical term defines AI, artificial intelligence, right? A layman's definition of artificial, artificial intelligence is a system that understands multiple signals and gives us the output as desired in simple English terms, right? It's, it's as simple as that. And as Mr. Uh, Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google would uh, say, right, AI is more profound than electricity and fire because we don't realize, but you know, we live in the world which is uh, full of AI in some form or fashion. It may not be as advanced as what we see on some of those sci-fi movies, but it's there, right? When we talk about AI, which in itself is an over evolving matter, we don't talk about yesterday or today. We also need to consider what a three or five years out scenario would be when the world population is 9.5 billion and not 7.5, right? When uh, we've seen the impact of Reliance Geo, I mean, today, so many of us have access to uh, cheap internet. I mean, most of us are on online, right? Even in rural population, the penetration is fantastic. Uh, imagine what will happen once 5G rolls out uh, imagine the implications of that on uh, on the industries, right? Everything will be so interconnected and the data will flow on real-time basis to take specific calls and actions and so on. The possibilities are endless, right? Now let's talk about our industry, digital ad industry. The global programmatic market is about 75 to 100 billion. To top that, uh, Google's 2019 ad revenue is about 134 billion and then add to that about 70 odd billion from Facebook. So that's about 250 or 270 billion give or take, right? And majority of that chunk is transacted through systems that works on AI. The, the intelligent engine that uh, on real time basis takes certain decisions uh, on our behalf, right? And gives us the desired output. So that's crazy, right? Uh, so that's on the media trading part. You know, other use cases, uh, other scenarios where AI is used widely is chatbots, right? Most of the customer service today uh, is online. They use chatbot. They're intelligent. Most of them are crazy. Chatbots now you can deliver through programmatic as well, right? Uh, Event-based personalized emails, AI-powered dynamic content optimization, DCO, as we popularly refer to as, right? Uh, it's not just about understanding various signals and bases that kind of put creative together and deliver. Also try and understand the emotion that needs to be delivered. Or can we, are we able to analyze the emotions that the creative has to deliver if it's a video or not a creative, right? Uh, website personalization, take an example of e-commerce. Most of us in past two months, uh, I mean, we've been waiting for a long, so now we can order online since past about a week or two, we, sh we, are, we are able to order online. Most of the things on e-com websites are personalized, depending upon our past purchase behavior, depending upon what kind of buckets, similar people uh, of our interests, what are they ordering? So th the system kind of takes into account all these factors and kind of delivers the right uh, product when we log onto the page, right? Uh, searches, right? Google search, Bing search. It's so far advanced now. And in our country, especially where majority of the population is uh, is a non-English uh, medium. Imagine the power of voice search 
to interpret what we are saying in our regional language to convert that into actual results. That requires a lot of understanding, a lot of AI, a lot of data crunching, right? And once you have all these data coming together, you require predictive analysis to, to try and understand what needs to be done, what how it should be done, and so on. So the use cases are endless, right? And uh, some of it we are we are experiencing, some of it is happening in the background. While we don't see it, it's really happening. So on that note, I would like to invite our esteemed panelists to give their point of view, understanding and share their experiences working with AI-based systems in programmatic and in their businesses. Let's start with uh, Mr. Garo. Garo, hi. Hi. Uh, please, please do share your experience working on AI systems and how Kirna software is adopted in its in its business. Sure. So thanks, thanks, Paris uh, and uh, Randy Kuti for inviting us. Uh, I think Paris, what you've done like really nicely is lay down the scope of what AI can do. While sometimes people think of AI and programmatic in a narrow uh, narrow manner, but then I think it's much more broad. Um, as a representative of Girnarsoft, which is the holding company of Car Deco, Zigbeels, Gadi, uh, a lot of other sites, something. Let me just like talk about the automobile sector uh, quickly. Uh, when we buy a car, it's not an easy decision to make. Uh, there's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of time that you actually dedicate to finding the right car for yourself. Uh, because if you take this decision in, a, in an incorrect manner, you're going to be ending up with a car which doesn't suit your purpose. And the economics, social, psychological cost to pay for owning a bad car. Um, so, so how we have actually tried to look that as a problem statement for a user is that how can we help the person find the right car? Um, I, I really do believe that there's nothing like a bad car anymore. They're all well engineered. Uh, they're all well marketed and so on and so forth. But then basis the need states, there are different cars for everyone. So how we are using AI to make sure that people find the right cars for themselves is uh, so, so what through permission we track um, the consumer behavior on our sites, which is on car deco, zig wheels and bike deco and, and gadi. And then we stitch those journeys into a single customer view. So you might have gone on Car Deco uh, to look at, say, a Hyundai Verna, uh, and you might have done the same on Zig Wheels also. But you're also looking on for used cars to sell on Gadi and and so on and so forth. So for the first thing is that that human mind really can't make a lot of sense of all these disparate looking journeys, and which is where our uh, internal uh, system called Connecto, which is a big data. Uh, personalization engine and marketing engine uh, that collects pretty much each and everything that we are doing on the site and stitches it into a consolidated single customer view um, and basis that the inferences are uh, made uh, that if you saw Hyundai Verna can I show you a Honda City now uh, can I show you Maruti Sias now which are the competitors in that segment and um, so and so forth. So this this is all about say personalization of your uh, journey through the data that we have collected to make sure that you get to the right car and at the right price. Uh, and that but that again stems from the whole fact that there's a problem statement that we're trying to solve. Um, and then that that's maybe one use case of how to use uh, artificial intelligence and programmatic way of deploying that intelligence uh, for for our users uh, in terms of content. Um, but Connector also helps us market uh, in a programmatic manner uh, to audiences. So there'll be some people who will be on-site. So I can re-engage with them through my on-site inventory. But there will be people who have used me but might be on other exchanges uh, or other ecosystems. How do I use the insights that I have on that person's consumer behavior is also something that we do fairly effectively. Uh, and then there's rule setting. Um, use on-site media first, uh, use the lesser cost medias than SMS or apps, app pushes if we have those handles on our users, and then go into remarketing and re-engaging with the consumer. And that's all done basis the insights and the cohortization that we do, basis the data that we collect. But the intention is always driven from one and one insight only. How do we let people find the right car for them basis their needs state? Uh, I'll just round up the uh, my, my point with my own example, right. why is this so crucial? Um, 
I'm I'm six feet four. I'm very tall. Um, wow. For me, I mean, like, when I was uh, buying a car for my dad, which I also would have used, um, I wanted a car with a large cabin size. Uh, the the so so the wheelbase as a technical aspect of the car uh, makes the most amount of sense for me, and that's what. So so for me, Honda City becomes much more better than Hyundai Verna because of just the cabin size. Both are excellent cars. Both are very well manufactured, engineered, marketed, great brands backing them up. But then for me, maybe the cabin size is the most important thing, and that's right. where I mean, like you know, when I bought that car for my dad, that's how the site helped me uh, look at the right uh, data points. So so that's a real life example yeah. on myself, and that's how we try and demystify uh, what we do as a uh, business for our users through AI and data collection. Great, great. Thank you so much for sharing those interesting insights, Gaurav. Now, automobile as a sector anyways is, uh, with, with the current situation, is going through difficult uh, times, right? And having AI as a means to be able to understand and communicate the right message to the consumer becomes an extremely important part of the entire strategy and how we kind of reach out to uh, uh, existing in-market or potential future customers. And the important point that you mentioned uh, during your conversation is, you know, a person suffering uh, for a vehicle on car deco and then going to Zigwill and how can we manage first party data, right? Uh, to bring the best out of what's available. And that, that's the way it kind of brings in the efficiency at the end of it, right? Yeah. That's an important uh, aspect of uh, effectively using AI. Prabhakar, hi. You know, understand at Angel Broking, uh, how is uh, data or AI models being used uh, not only for uh, brand and communications, but are there any learnings from real market that, that's been adopted for marketing communications? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, thanks Paras and thanks Brand Equity team. It's, an, it's a privilege to be part of this panel today. And uh, before I start, I just want to kind of give a small definition of AI. Uh, right. Just building on what Paras has said, for me, AI is something which gives you output B for an input A, you know, in the sense that you put some input and some output comes out of it, right? Right. And uh, many a times for a normal uh, user like me, it's like a black box. It's like a black magic, right? So input A and output B comes out of it. And if you look at machine learning, which is also like, like users like me use it interchangeably, like for us, machine learning is AI and AI is machine learning. So machine learning is a type of AI, which is more about, you know, uh, looking at gigantic data, you know, gigabytes of data. That's what uh, machine learning is all about. Now, having said that, uh, Angel Broking, you know, the firm which I represent today in the panel discussion, uh, we belong to BFSI business, you know, and we right. kind of, in, we are in financial services. So we deal with customers, we deal with data, we don't have a huge factory. In fact, we can say uh, our factory is about data and customer data. Right. Yes. So we have multiple use cases, you know, like uh, we have uh, a rule based engine called ARC, which is into advisory. You know, it's a, it's an ind industry leading uh, output uh, from angel broking. And also we have multiple use cases in customer service uh, in our uh, uh, risk management risk. But in marketing, I would like to talk about your four years like modeling uh, users profile segmentation and clustering uh, using Google and in Google and Facebook. So right. that's our first use case and a very important use case. In terms of uh, the second use case, which is about audience optimization. So right. we uh, have moved into programmatic last year. So we use uh, DV360 in a big way. So we do a lot of hyper targeting uh, based on how consumers have engaged with us and responded to our brand advertising. So in terms of ad sequencing and all. So we use uh, AI, AI there, uh, you know, leveraging third party tools provided by Google ecosystem. A uh, lot of use cases are also based on creative relevance. Like right. uh, we use interactions to kind of customize and personalize content. Like last year, my team used a lot of regional, uh, you know, language creatives. Right. So to, you know, give someone in Bombay a Tamil based creative based on their language setting, based on their browser usage his history, all right. that was possible because of, you know, the AI offered systems. Right. And uh, the fourth use case is more in terms of media efficiency. So we use a lot of attribution modeling, marketing mix modeling, uh, journey discovery, 
uh, kind of uh, scenarios and that has really helped us we have seen our uh, cpl dropping as high as 30% by using wow. these ai ai based use cases and the last uh, and not the least i think somewhere uh, is a fraud and brand safety issue avoidance you know this is where we have seen a lot of ai use cases not just in google ecosystem but also in our third party tools like apps flyer uh, where we kind of lot of lot of uh, fraud happens in uh, attribution in uh, mobile uh, landscape so we use apps flyer system and they use ai to avoid uh, uh, you know fraud uh, and 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 brand safety issue so these are right. like third party tools for us Uh, apart from that we also have internal ai ml based models which we use for accelerating lead conversion for us right. you know leveraging our large database to get new and new customers i will talk more about it as, as the panel goes today right and, uh, so broadly these are the use cases for us at angel broking thank you great thank you so much for working with that great insight i mean it Uh, more or less covers all aspects of digital uh, marketing right uh, from communication to media efficiency and so on thank you so much for that i think we also have uh, miss manasi from mastercard uh, online now hey manasi good morning yes hi morning sorry for the technical glitch but hopefully now all right yeah i think most of us are going to get the right uh, great manasi thank you so much um, So Manasi, at Mastercard, how are we using AI? I mean, uh, without which the bush, you can just help us understand how. how Absolutely, absolutely. So I think at Mastercard, we are essentially a B to B to C business. Right. We help banks and merchants worldwide uh, encourage you know consumers to spend in a safe and responsible manner. So I think AI is absolutely critical at gauging consumer trends real time. Because let's face it, people don't plan. Yeah, they do plan for some purchases, but yeah. encouraging consumers to spend is really about getting. there calls at that particular point of time and i think ai has been an incredible tool in freeing up the marketer's time to focus on the big picture on the strategic aspects of marketing while allowing the last mile customization almost effortlessly and it's led to tremendous increase in roi not just for us but for our partner banks and merchants so i think it's been a great addition to the mix for us hey great roi that's that's one thing which is coming out uh, uh, you know as obvious as it can get get right manasi at banks uh, you i mean every transaction that i make if i have my master card right uh, you know just about everything about where i'm transacting the volume what am i buying uh, how often am i buying all of that uh, and then that's that's pi personally identifiable information which technically cannot be used for advertising or marketing purpose uh the other part is when you are advertising when you are putting up an ad on or on digital medium right which is in most cases is non personally identifiable information how how effectively if the so first question is are we in some form of fashion taking learning from the party data the pi data to say that these kind of audiences are exhibiting certain behavior and kind of put it back into our marketing spends or take marketing budgets and try and map it with uh, the way users are behaving and then basis that optimize on our uh, uh, on our media strategy how is there a role that ai plays in kind of mapping these two data sets uh, for mastercard so thanks for that question now first of all while uh, we do yes as you said we uh, the banks certainly do know card holder transaction information none of us and certainly mastercard will never ever use personally identifiable information absolutely first of all and we are absolutely not allowed to and we would never use it so ai is for either social media data or legitimately available third party data i think what it helps us do is to is two things from a marketing perspective one is convert uh, media planning from a top down exercise to a bottom up exercise not with any preconceived notions of you know audiences so it's easy to say millennials it's easy to say gen xers so on and so forth right what i think ai has done is allowed for micro segments based on actual search data and the second thing it does is to refine creatives in real time i mean we all know the adage right 50% of 
marketing is effective i just wish we knew which 50% so i think ai helps us go down that route to say is a particular creative working do you need a minor tweak do you need to dial up a particular message dial down a particular message so i think the two major ways in which we found ai to be uh, to be effective because we are a global brand with a very yes. global positioning of priceless right but priceless the nuances in each country and in fact in india in each part of india very yes. differently as all of us would know yeah true true that's great thanks so much for that info manchi you know the next question that kind of uh, comes to our mind when we talk about ai is uh, is it make versus buy okay because there are many companies today offering ai based solutions whether it is some sort of a dashboarding tool to kind of uh, cut the clutter or uh, is it something which we can use off the shelf to optimize on our media spends or or around creative communication and so on and so the question is how much are we ready to really spend on uh, building ai tools or or acquiring one or using one and for how long should we be you know keeping patience to kind of uh, see the best output i mean i would like to hear from uh, you know from industry perspective not from brand specifically because each one of you represent uh, different parts of uh, industries right would be interesting to hear how uh, this is the industry situation and so on uh, whether we should go for make versus buy and for how long we should kind of uh, keep the patience to you know see the output uh we start with karo sure paras i think uh, this decision rests on two variables uh right. one is speed to market so second is the cost that you intend to incur uh versus the returns that you expect by deploying such a tool uh um, right. i think if you are uh, working with a lean team and a lot of these answers will be like it depends um and how your your uh, reality of your organization your objectives are the volatility of your organization is and if you are working with a lean team and you don't want to like add on to a lot of payroll then maybe i'm right. going uh buying a tool makes a lot of sense where you scale up really fast but then any organization that knows that it's expanding rapidly and still hasn't come to a steady state in terms of what it does in term going to market uh, the business model keeps on evolving the expectations from the marketing and the product unit keeps on evolving then maybe you need to have a native tool which is much more uh, adaptable uh, based on right. your own system architecture based on your business model so right. there is no single answer to this uh, i think it depends but then these are maybe the two variables the cost versus revenue impact right. uh, are you spending 10 rupees and you making 100 rupees in return then it's a no brainer uh, right. and the second is just the complexity and the evolution of the business uh, at which stage are you are you a business which has been operating in the same manner for the past 10 years and don't intend are not going to change in the next 5 years right. buy a tool uh, because that's not going to change uh, your your go to market is not going to change rapidly but like like being in digital businesses um, our, our business model our go to market approaches change because of consumer behavior shifts like right now with covid the automobile right. consumption has changed like overnight so i i with with connecto which which is our legacy system we can make the changes we can teach the algos much more rapidly than get uh, having it done externally so a lot of this answer depends on uh, it depends very frankly sure sure right right manasi would you want to throw some light on how yeah so i think uh, first of all i think we'd all be hard pressed to find an industry that's not impacted by technology i think everyone every industry is to some extent or the other and i think a couple of uh, important uh, points over here i think it's good right. to prove principle by buying and i think god have made the same point that without immediately in it basically as with any new technology it comes down to optional buy in it ideally should not be something that just marketing drives because the benefits of ai have to uh, percolate to product design uh, you know to like in our case in mastercard's case to safety and security ai plays right. a huge role in detecting frauds even before right so kind of being nostradamus using ai uh, so the 
organization has to be convinced sometimes a good way of doing it is to buy it as a pilot but i firmly believe eventually you've got to invest because it's not just about buying a software and installing it it's about equipping the organization to use it adding first party third party data and you know evolving the algorithm over time and that only happens i think if you do a combination of make and buy that's honestly been uh, my experience great thank you so much mansi for that Mr. Prabhakar, any input on that? Yeah, so I think somewhere Goro and Mansi have covered right. uh, points which are relevant uh, for the industry. See, in my view, the true sense of ROI for AI investment is all about first defining what are the desired business outcomes. Now, that's a very right. important point, you know, because yes. uh, once you have those desired business outcomes, then only you can understand the cost better. then you can understand understanding the cascading effects and somewhere there is also a talent implication because you know right. talent is is rare you know talent is not yes. necessarily available at at an advertiser level right now so right. in my own experience uh, you know, thankfully because of the management support we have been experimenting with ai ml system for almost a year now you know at okay. least in the context of marketing in the context of overall organization we are doing it for last 3 4 years now so in the context of marketing we dis, uh, kind of started it last a uh, year back and in my learning the biggest issue there is uh, availability of data and data training so yes. the cases where we have gone for our own ai ml system are those cases which are unique to the customer funnel of angel broking and the way we understand it so what we know for a fact that while we are big customer for google and facebook and we use ai ml tool available in their ecosystem Uh, available from universal app campaigns to uh, audience segmentation to hyper targeting uh, look alike modeling similar audience custom intent so there are multiple other such tools which are available from google and facebook we use but there are right. certain use cases which are unique to us and what we did we actually approached it in a tripartite way a tripartite or a three pronged way you know in a way because first working with an agency to develop a google cloud plus python based programming model then we have our own data science team so those team also have are working with three uh, kind of model i'll just give an example yeah. so uh, you know the uh, the agency team is working on some model with google cloud and python our right. data team is saying that they will use a random forest and xg boost kind of model in that you know so i didn't know much about it i read about it but this seemed very interesting you know the same problem and i have less data there uh, we are building data as you move along but this can really give us additional 300 to 400 percent uh, 300 to 400 basis point increase in our conversion rate and now this team is using random forest and xg boost kind of model and then we reached out to microsoft azure which opened up a huge library of ai ml use cases and said pick pick something from there you know so <laughs> so somewhere you know if the business outcomes are very clear because we know right. this is a this is a very uh, critical project for us if we win there then our advantage will, will be superlative you know uh, right. hence uh, we are putting all our all out efforts there you know ho however make and buy depends on like you know if there is is a general use case you can use google and facebook if it is very specific use case your own uh, own customer funnel uh, use case which you don't know much about you need right. to make it uh, on your own so that's that's yeah. my experience thank you so much for that mr prabhakar i think one thing is pretty clear uh, from what we're hearing is uh, we cannot shy away from ml ai it's it's here to stay it's it's here to evolve uh, us as humans we just need to figure out ways to kind of walk with it and try and figure out what are our pain points and can can some work which is either repetitive in nature or something which requires a lot of computing power can we then uh, can we use ai or ml to kind of you know uh, get the best output uh, possible without spending too much of time uh, and then that again the call is like uh, gaurav mentioned is dependent on the impact of that on business and revenue and so on so that's there right so there is no denying the fact that it's here to stay and we have to live with it in my so one thing one example that i can uh, add to to uh, something that i saw personally who was following is uh, you know a couple of years ago uh, lexus decided to create uh, an ad they wanted to come up with a new tvc 
and this is of course not limited only to the digital part of the world, the advertising world, but the TV part as well, right? Uh, they wanted to create a TVC, but they thought that for this time, I think we should probably go about allow the system to 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 figure out what kind of TVC that TVC that we should be making, right? So what they did is they took past 15 years of Cannes winning auto uh, ads, okay, gave it to IBM Watson, okay. Uh, the clear expectation from Watson was, hey, you know what, please help us analyze these uh, 15 years of auto creatives that uh, won Cannes. One from the aspect of how long the TV series, the, the creative should be in terms of duration, whether it's a 30 second or one minute and so on. Second aspect was, can we also use machine learning to understand the emotions that kind of comes out when you look at a TVC, right? So e emotion is something which generally it's a little difficult to kind of analyze, right? Uh, because emotion is very personal. For a father, emotion could be different towards uh, his son or daughter, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, uh, you know, with the wife and husband and so on, right? So what kind of emotion that needs to be invoked, which kind of triggers uh, consumers to remember the ad and next time when they are in market to buy a vehicle, they kind of consider that. So they did, uh, they did use IBM Watson and they kind of uh, pushed the boundary, right? So not only understanding various aspects of what worked well with uh, older creatives, but even in terms of uh, allowing the system to write the script itself, right? And using that script to design the TVC and then roll it out. Uh, and I think they saw great results, right? After publishing the ad, I think the, the outcome that they uh, saw was was in their favor. So I'm assuming it's all hunky-dory. So AI has been used not just in terms of understanding data signals in arithmetic, mathematics way, but even in terms of software things, which are which us as humans only can understand the system kind of you know lags behind in terms of what's what's a good thing, right? So it's been used in many ways. That's one experience. The second part I would uh, like to add is Coca-Cola did something interesting. Uh, what they did, and that's that's an offline data, right? So use cases going beyond just digital advertising and how those signals then were used for their advertising. They put up vending machines across uh, multiple locations, across multiple countries, right? And each of these vending machines had the capability to allow consumers to mix and match the the ingredients and come up with their own uh, 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 cold drink, right? And they, they, they observed this behavior across multiple places. And what they figured is there are two or three combinations which are very popular across almost all regions. So they, they took that as an input from offline world to design their, their uh, communication and marketing strategy. So that was another interesting one that kind of Coke worked on. Moving on to the other part of it, right? So now we've been using AI in many ways, depending upon the outcome, desire, and so on. How does this situation change now that we have, you know, the whole COVID-19 thing? It's been about two months of lockdown in our country. Most of us are sitting at home, uh, working from home in, in uh, uh, interesting conditions with kids around and so on. How does you envision uh, AI taking shape to, to one, uh, improve the performance and to help kind of cut down the cost as well, right? Do you, do you foresee adoption of AI being more prevalent as opposed to pre-COVID era? Do you foresee that coming in? We'll start with Mr. Prabhakar. So very interesting question, you know, because, uh, you know, we, we had AD and BC to know the era of human civilization. <laughs> you know, uh, Pre-Corona, post-Corona, it was very interesting. Yeah. I think somewhere we have to go to the basic, uh, you know, customer changes, you know, customer behavior change, which has been brought brought out by Corona. So okay. first of all, we are seeing uh, digital transformation across, you know, across all sectors, all possible, you know, places, uh, you know, this is there. And then we can look at, you know, what all, uh, what all customers are doing when they are at home, like if they are not really buying uh, something, you know, so they are right. watching, uh, lot more uh, uh, you know kind of ott now you know netflix right. and on right. prime and all of that and uh, they're also kind of watching streaming uh, television listening to kind of song on demand video on demand etc right so right. If you look at these two phenomena what is clear is that the ai use cases are high in both cases because digital transformation right. uh, more and more digital transformation more and more data 
more and more data Correct. means you know more and more analytical power behind it like amazing amount of quantum amount of analytical power and certain outcomes have to be uh, kind of you know predicted and right. proper targeting would be required right. and too many data points about a single customer can be analyzed you know right. that is all a uh, healthy ground for ai kind of use case to grow you know sure. and, and and that's that's the that's the big uh, change event the second aspect which i want to talk about is if this is the way the world will be and even once the uh, fear of uh, covid 19 goes down or some vaccine is discovered uh, you know god willing should happen at the earliest you know <laughs> even All of then, us hope so fingers crossed <laughs> even then you know maybe uh, will be will be still be kind of you know home bound you know that is possibility and that's where the biggest use case of ai which is a chatbot voice chatbot from your uh, amazon alexa to you know to siri or to cortana you know and this is very interesting you know i'll tell you something like uh, right you talked about emotions and that's very interesting now when uh, microsoft cortana needed to be trained very very extensively they wanted the uh, personality of the chatbot to be uh, helpful uh, caring but not bossy and to right. get that particular tinge of personality they used poet playwright and novelist to uh, train cortana you know and and all all those were used to train cortana second you know the big trouble is that you know how do how do chatbot empathize you know because if right. alexa is so ingrained in your life and you are so pissed off you are so frustrated <laughs> you voice something it cannot just say oh i understand <laughs> have the ability to empathize to ask you one or two related question and right. then show you some positive light right so how does ai enable chatbot does that so i think the combination of more buying opportunity more data points available and more uh, empathetic sympathetic emotion led human conditions between the ai and human interface i think those opportunities have increased post covid you know in my opinion true i i completely agree with you i mean i don't know in how many ways things are going to change but it does look like a lot of things are going to change for us and the way we live our life in general right mr gaurav this is the same question if i may just add to it you know while uh, one part is post covid how things are going to change for uh, for auto for your business and for auto industry do you foresee oems auto uh, manufacturers working closely with uh, businesses such as yours to to bring in more efficiency in terms of their uh, production line in terms of uh, how much which color of car to be produced so on right do, do you foresee that kind of, uh, between two different companies the collaboration happening to bring in the efficiency do you foresee that happening yeah so so but as i think whenever there's a macro event or right. the scale that we are going through right now it will change us as humanity as human race forever what what's happening right now is um, current uh, trends from behavioral economics perspective uh, which which talks about the that a person makes more irrational decisions than rationally thought out decisions uh, one of the biggest thing is uh, the whole uh, thing that we need to safeguard our losses rather than acquire new gains yeah right. uh, if you give a person a chance to actually make 10 rupees versus saving the 5 rupees that he has in his pocket he would rather say that i will save the 5 rupees that i have in my pocket and if we look at the, that as a starting point of what's going to happen between oems and digitization and players like us is um, the the whole loss psychosis works in two ways one is obviously reduced incomes disposable income people would rather not spend on things which are not uh, deemed necessary yeah but the flip side of that might be that the uh, so so automobiles luxury travel might be one sector that would be impacted by that yeah i would rather buy things that keep me and my family uh, well fed uh, well look after rather than right. a luxury car right but the other side of that is also and this is something that we see in through data uh, that people are more predisposed towards personal mobility than shared mobility in the past two months um <laughs> in china uh, where 72% people were uh, more uh, attuned towards shared mobility like didi chakshing or the uber and ola of the uh, countries 
Right. Uh, now only 32%. And the rest, entire thing has shifted towards person mobility. Now the big impact of that is that will people buy more used cars? A person who's going to buy a bike, can they actually avail of good loans um, and then buy a used car for one and a half lakh rupees to keep his and her family safe uh, and have a trusted mode of transportation? And these kind of insights will go to not just uh, from a new car production perspective, but also used car production. Because the residual value of the cars, uh, the kind of colors that people are looking for, the kind of features that people are looking for, uh, right. all that comes through uh, the interactions or the digital footprints that people leave on our side of the extended ecosystem. And that's where I think the current situation will be great for any player who is trying to digitize the industry in the medium to long term. And I foresee that happening for automobiles also. Right. And just to add on to uh, the, the, the broader question, how, how COVID is going to change and how AI will be even much more uh, uh, relevant. Let me give you an example, uh, not example, let me just talk about the theory. Any good AI or ML stack is, ba- uh, is fundamentally sound only because of one thing, which is your data quality. Yeah. One is structured data, which is what you capture through your own systems. And that might be a first party data or you import that from a third party data. And the other right. is unstructured data which is the consumer behavior, people out there living their lives, um, what are they talking on internet, and so on and so forth. So the first one is easier. We are seeing a lot of changes happening on our uh, consumer uh, behavior on our sites, uh, the way people used to surf now, earlier was now, but that's easier to understand. But when a person talks to one uh, to one, or how they behave in the offline world is the winning play. And I'll give another example from China. So post lockdown, getting off, uh, people started using cars, metro, everything. I mean, like, it's not that people are not going to use metro, but then uh, in in varying degrees and forms. And the interesting insight that started to emerge was that people were using it only on weekdays. Yeah. Uh, So the consumer behavior that is uh, still going as per usual was that people are going to offices uh, and transporting themselves from A to B to go to office. But weekend, which is when people go to malls, restaurants, take the family out, that transportation totally died. So people were not right. using the services on weekdays. They was like, hey, if there's no need, I'm not going to step out. So there's a consumer behavior shift, which is all about the unstructured data coming and enriching your data, uh, your AI and ML. Because as right. marketers, as business managers, you're only as good as making the right sense of the consumer behaviors. And that has changed okay. rapidly. So. Okay. Unstructured data that is flowing in or, or, or how you actually make sense of that will be the winning play and which is why AI becomes so much more important. Thank you for that great insight. I think you just put a, a method to madness on uh, how do we kind of go about, you know, putting the right uh, practice in place between structured and unstructured data. Mansi, in my mind, every time I think about MasterCard, it's it's a physical card that's there in my hand from one of the other banks and I go out and I transact. Post-COVID, the rise of, and I can take from my personal experience, the rise of use of GPA and uh, Paytm and alike has gone up considerably. Uh, so how does MasterCard kind of take that up? Uh, and if you can share some insights on that and um, using AI or using situation to kind of improve how does how does that yeah so i think again covid i think as everybody agrees it's a fundamental game changer yeah there is a before covid and after COVID. i think for the payments industry as a whole and especially in india the good part is there is a realization that there is a moment away from cash physical currency because it involves physical contact and any physical contact increases the risk of getting uh, COVID, right? So then it comes down to what are the non-contact modes of payment. As MasterCard worldwide, we've seen a huge increase in uh, e-commerce payments because obviously, right, people don't want to step out. I think as Gaurav said, you step out when you have to, you don't right. step out discretionarily. Now with uh, you know, everything now being delivered more, I mean, including 
attention. I think there's been e-commerce, and that's where I think we've used AI to kind of target microscopically uh, audiences to say, now uh, shop, it's safe, boost our safety messaging, and so on. What we've also seen is a huge rise in contactless payments, you know, as countries emerge from the lockdown, China, for example, we tap and go. You know, so I mean, the card does not leave your hand, so you don't exchange anything with the with the shopkeeper. Uh, so again, those are places where we've been able to micro-target our communication. And I also just want to add, in addition to this, I think one huge area that AI and machine learning and data science helps now is in quantifying the impact of your campaigns. I mean, let's face it, everywhere, you know, business will take a all the more need for marketeers now to be general managers in terms of how budget is utilized. And I think this kind of data science uh, really helps us do that. And that's been another area where we've seen not just in India, but in other countries, uh, including in the European countries, which are kind of now ending from lockdown, uh, some impact of this, you know, literally put in a little bit, judge the effectiveness, course correct and move on. Great. So one thing is for sure, uh, I think uh, the way way we need to kind of start understanding uh, and using AI or ML is to continuously keep understanding our consumer behavior, right, uh, through various data streams. So the first part to for any organization to kind of get into the AI ML uh, setup is to to have a strategy around how do you want to capture user information and then how do you kind of analyze to bring the best out of it, right? Uh, as uh, somebody mentioned, it's it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you're capturing incorrect information, you're gonna get incorrect output. So the important part to start with is to, to be able to identify, understand what are the data points that we are going after and that's relevant for us. And then this is that kind of make great use of it. So thank you so much, everyone. I think we have 10 minutes to take a few questions. I have a few questions on my screen here. I'm gonna just read it out and we'll take it as it. Um, the first question is, is there a scale or volume stroke value of transactions where programmatic business makes sense? So I, I'll take that. I'll take that myself. Uh, is there a volume or uh, value of transaction where programmatic business makes sense? It is, the short answer is yes and no both. Because if the volume is low, but if your spread is, let's say, one month, then the impact that you will probably observe is minimal. But if if the if if the volume is low and and the duration for which you're planning to run the activity is, let's say, one day or two days or ten days, depending on the volume that you plan to spend, uh, you will see some boost, right? So let me give you an example. So for one of the and this is an old example that I kind of learned. Uh, uh, on the job. So one of the online uh, hotel booking uh, company, they, the way they wanted to uh, understand, so they, they've been spending a lot of money on TV. Now they're not uh, spending much. I mean, even pre-COVID during past few months, they've not been spending much, but earlier they used to spend a lot of money, right? And how do you understand whether there is an impact of what money are spending on digital, is it really making sense and so on? So the way they used to do is, uh, of course, they've deployed various uh, analytics tools on their app, on their website, and so on, to be able to understand the traffic coming in and so on. And then the way they used to plan their uh, TV budgets were there will not be an overlap between TVC that runs across multiple channels. So there will be one TVC at any given point in time for that five or ten minutes that will run. Right? They will see map that time band with the impact of what's happening on their website and see whether it's really working for them or not. Right, so it it's really boils down to the duration, which is an important factor. If if uh, if the duration is good enough, I think you will see an impact, and you will see you will start seeing uh, business sense in parking money programmatically. Uh, the second question is, amidst this pandemic, uh, how can AI be a savior to media houses and journalists? That's from uh, Kashmira. Anyone would want to kind of pick up? I, I see Mansi smiling on that question. Maybe I'll reach out to Mansi. Do you want to take up this question, Mansi? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how it sort of specifically benefits a journalist or a media house. I mean, I'm guessing. <laughs> If the question is about, you know, media sales at this point of time, because I understand media behavior has changed and, you know, therefore 
companies uh, you know buying and advertising has changed then i think again and i think for us the point that you mentioned start small start with a single time bank and use ai and data to converge media because everybody knows that tv viewing has gone up mobile viewing has gone up tablet viewing has gone up use limited budgets to optimize using ai right so can you converge what is being seen on tv and what is being seen on the phone right now simple things good to do things in times of plenty essential to do at these times right so let the crisis and the difficulty be the opportunity to demonstrate how small quantities of data used well can drive effectiveness for everyone that's the way i would look at it true and i at the other question is from uh, prashant dikshit what's the difference between rule based journeys stroke recommendations to ai based recommendation the honda city to cars is rule based output or ai i am not entirely sure on this question but uh, uh, garu do you want to do you want to take this i think what usually precedes is rule based um, right. logics uh obviously mm-hmm. there's a lot of in, uh, knowledge that marketers and the teams will have about consumer behaviors and they'll use that to make some rule based assumptions and then the ab testing and so on right. so forth which obviously shows a winner and the not so good solutions right but um uh, that is only verifying or not verifying something that we already know right and ai is the second step to that i mean how can you actually then like start throwing out a little bit more uh questions or more assumptions which you have no idea about right. uh, or the variables are not like that that uh, or were not in your decision making set earlier and and that's where i think the first port of call will always be rule based uh, at least that's what i follow uh basis the understanding or verification of that then you let the ai uh rule basing uh, happen right. on that honda city was more about uh, rule based but the entire thing about um, people are not looking for the best car they were looking for the right car was something that came through ai and a lot through unstructured data very frankly right that inciting was done through uh, unstructured data coming in uh, but rule based uh, a lot of rule based also because you have to teach algorithms to deliver value right right thanks so much for that the next one is uh, i think something which uh, prabhakar test upon i'll uh, reach out to him for the answer how ai and programmatic helps to marketers to understand and communicate with prospective cons- customers behavior in each step of their buying process uh, prabhakar did mention about uh, how you know this can be used on creative front so some light on that be helpful right uh see uh, i would touch upon that first i want to tell you that you know nowadays if you look at uh, programmatic no it is all about uh, two kind of funnels so one is what is your uh, you know remarketing retargeting funnel and what is your prospecting bucket i will not say funnel bucket you know so what right. is your prospecting bucket what is your remarketing retargeting bu- buckets okay so when you look right. at a uh, lower most end you know i mean first you start with your custom match audience you look at that and then you keep on expanding with similar audience custom intent you know affinity group and that's how you go up the funnel you know to kind of look at more audience to reach out to right. and this is where the ai ml programmatic helps you a lot okay now coming to uh, each stage step of the way in the in the funnel i think uh, somewhere when it comes to awareness i think audience expansion is very critical you know youtube offers you so many uh, ai based tools which can be leveraged you can look at uh, those kind of tools to kind of run your video you can also do lot of brand lift survey in brand lift survey you will come to know you know uh, between the control group and test group so test group which has got exposed to your communication visa we control group which has not uh, what has been the lift in awareness consideration or purchase intent in the mid funnel activity you know uh, which is where the consideration and engagement happens there is a lot more opportunity like in uh, dv360 which is a programmatic uh, you know lot of uh, so if you look at customer journey you know they go through multiple touch points and many a times in the mid funnel programmatic helps a lot because of the smart display campaign you know you have uh, you know uh, uh, rlsa campaign uh, which 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 runs search ads uh, remarketing list search advertisements which continue so this really helps in the kind of uh, middle middle end of the funnel in the lower most end of the funnel is where you go for more of the custom match more of the similar audience you know which really help you so this way right. programmatic can help you end to end 
you know and, right. and thankfully uh, your google and facebook which are the the biggest uh, media platform or publisher platform in a way uh, could help you a lot because they have solution right. for each of the step so talk to sure. your google counterpart and they can really tell you how to spend your money okay so sure. thank you so much for that i think we are just uh, out of time so i'm just going to thank you each one of you for taking your time to talk to us about uh, ai and the future of it i think uh, the way we are looking at ai today is we we are trying to first capture the data and then analyze to to try and predict some outcome there is a lot that needs to be done on this front where we start predicting the future not in the literal sense while reading your the astronomy part of it but you know try and understand things which we cannot foresee but due to whatever uh, things that we've gathered over a period kind of the system automatically understands uh, so there is a lot that is coming on our way uh, in the ai ml space in programmatic uh, maybe programmatic the, the name itself will change to ai based buying i don't know this there's a lot that uh, needs to be done on that front right uh one story that uh, one one liner before we end this session is uh, i remember watching uh, terminator when i was a child right where this robot comes from the future and uh helps save a boy and his family in a way right and uh, somewhere in the movie the robot says uh, ano says uh, i'll be back so the ai topic ai ml topic is something which which demands us to say that we'll be back uh, hopefully soon with more insights and info on how things have evolved from now on thank you thank you everyone for your time thank you manasi thank you prabhakar thank you gaurav thank you branik and uh, audiences it's been pleasure. thank you so much so much thank you, thank you. goodbye